So I jumped off to take a look to see what it was that I did pick up out of there. And as I turned it around, it was looking at me. In a forgotten Florida swamp, a discovery was made that could rewrite human history. An 8,000-year-old skull was unearthed, and what was inside is the stuff of nightmares for scientists. To find such an intact brain inside a, a perfectly preserved skull of the antiquity that we thought we were dealing with was unprecedented. We're not talking about a curse or a monster. We're talking about its DNA. When they sequenced the genetic code from its miraculously preserved brain, they found something that doesn't fit, something that points to a terrifying hole in our family tree. The thing nobody tells you is that this discovery means we are not who we think we are, and you can see this everywhere. The Bog's First Secret It all began on a completely ordinary morning in the sweltering summer of 1982. On a dusty construction site just outside Titusville, Florida, a new housing development called Wendover was being carved out of the landscape. The air was thick with humidity, the kind that hangs heavy and makes every movement feel like a struggle. For Steve Vanderjack, a seasoned heavy equipment operator, it was just another day at the office, which in his case was the cramped cab of a powerful backhoe. His task was simple. Dig out a retention pond, a shallow basin to handle water runoff from the future neighborhood. The land was flat, the soil was soft, and the job was routine. But you see, not all things are what they seem. As Steve maneuvered the machine, its huge metal arms swinging with practiced ease, he dropped the bucket into the damp, dark earth. He felt the familiar pull of the soil giving way, but then came something else. A sudden, jarring resistance. The entire machine jolted and the engine groaned in protest. Steve's first thought was that he'd hit a large rock, but that was strange in itself. Florida's soil, a mix of sand and ancient marine deposits, is notoriously rock-free. You can dig for miles and never find a stone bigger than your fist. Still, he stopped the backhoe, the sudden silence amplifying the buzz of insects in the 95-degree heat. Climbing down from the cab, his boots sinking into the soft, sun-baked mud, he walked over to where the bucket had scraped the earth bare. Kneeling down, he peered into the shallow hole. There, half buried in the dark peat, was a rounded off-white object. He reached in, his fingers closing around it, and pulled it loose. The moment it was in his hands, a shiver ran down his spine, a sharp, immediate chill that had nothing to do with the weather. It wasn't a rock. It was a human skull. The bone was stained a deep, dark brown from millennia spent soaking in the bog's acidic water. It felt dense and surprisingly heavy, cold to the touch despite the oppressive heat. There was no flesh, no hair, just the smooth curved bone of the cranium and the empty sockets where eyes once were. Steve stared at it, frozen. He later described an overwhelming and deeply unsettling feeling as if he had woken something up that was meant to sleep forever. He carefully placed the skull back on the ground and scrambled back, his heart pounding. The construction site was no longer just a plot of land, it was a potential crime scene. He immediately radioed his supervisor who ordered all work to stop. Within the hour, the quiet hum of construction was replaced by the wail of sirens and local law enforcement arrived ready to investigate what they believed was a case of modern foul play. What many overlooked was that they were off by about 8,000 years. The past was a far more complicated crime scene than they could ever imagine. The people time forgot. When officers from the sheriff's department first peered into the murky water of the pond, they saw what Steve Vanderjack had seen, a potential burial site. The bits of bone peeking through the thick layer of wet moss seemed to confirm their suspicions. This part of Florida had its share of dark secrets and missing persons cases. Rumors of strange things happening in the woods had been local lore for decades. So, to put it mildly, the discovery of human remains wasn't a total shock. The site was cordoned off with yellow tape, and the careful process of uncovering the truth began. However, as the county coroner examined the first skull and the few other bone fragments, he began to have doubts. Something was off. The condition of the remains didn't fit with a recent passing. The skull was too dark, and the bone itself felt too soft, almost porous. It had absorbed the color of the bog, and it crumbled slightly at the edges when handled. The coroner knew this wasn't the work of a few years or even a few decades. This was something much, much older. Still, they couldn't rule anything out. 
As the team dug deeper, they found more remains, and then more. Soon the body count began to rise, and a disturbing pattern emerged. The skeletons were buried deep within a consistent, thick layer of peat that hadn't been disturbed in a very long time. By the time they had identified parts of over 160 individuals, and with no signs of trauma on any of the bones, law enforcement knew they were out of their depth. This was not a modern crime, this was ancient history. They reached out to Florida State University and the case eventually landed on the desk of Dr. Glenn Doran, a young anthropologist fascinated by ancient burial practices. When Dr. Doran first arrived, he saw what he later described as just a scummy pond in the middle of nowhere. But that impression didn't last. His team began a massive and ambitious undertaking. To properly excavate an underwater cemetery, they first had to get rid of the water. They installed over 150 well points around the pond, connecting them to enormous pumps that worked around the clock, pulling over 700 gallons of water out of the ground every single minute. For weeks, the pumps roared day and night. Slowly, as the dark water receded, the land began to reveal its secrets. What emerged was beyond anything they could have imagined. They had stumbled upon one of the oldest and most significant archaic burial sites in North America. Radiocarbon dating confirmed the site was between 7,000 and 8,000 years old. This was a time when experts believed people in the Americas were simple nomads. But Wendover told a different story. These were not primitive wanderers. They were a settled, sophisticated community. The bodies had been laid to rest with incredible care. Many were wrapped in hand-woven fabric shrouds, positioned in specific ways. They were buried with precious items, tools carved from antler, jewelry made from shells, and even intricately woven bags. The textile fragments they found turned out to be the oldest woven fabrics ever discovered in the Western Hemisphere, a truly mind-blowing fact that challenged everything scientists thought they knew about early technology. There was a deep sense of ritual and respect here. Over the course of more than a thousand years, generations of people returned to this exact spot to bury their loved ones. This pond was sacred. One teenager with a severe spinal condition had lived well into his teens, which meant he was cared for his entire life. This was a community bound by compassion. But the real mystery was still hidden, locked inside one skull in particular. The Woman Who Waited as the excavation continued with each discovery more stunning than the last, one find rose above all the others. The team was working on the 91st set of remains when they uncovered it. Buried near the center of the pond, it was a single skull, extraordinarily well-preserved. But the true shock came when it was taken back to the lab. Under the bright, sterile lights, researchers gently opened the cranium. The entire team fell silent. Nestled inside the ancient bone was a brain. It was shrunken and darkened by time, but it was unmistakably a human brain, its folds and creases still visible. Against all odds, after nearly 8,000 years in a swamp, it had survived. The level of preservation was, to put it simply, impossible. Soft tissue like a brain is one of the first things to decay, usually disappearing within a few years. Yet here it was, one of the most well-preserved ancient brains ever found. The skull belonged to a woman, estimated to be about 45 years old when she passed. Her skeleton told the story of a long and difficult life. Arthritis in her spine and hands spoke of years of hard physical labor. Her teeth were worn down from a coarse diet. The evidence of multiple childbirths suggested she had raised a family and was likely a respected elder in her community. She was a survivor, a matriarch. But for all her bones could tell them, it was her brain that held the real secret. Sure. You see, the unique chemistry of the Wendover Bog, a low oxygen, neutral pH environment, had essentially pickled the bodies, halting the normal process of decay. The peat itself acted as a natural preservative. This explained how the bones and even some fabric survived, but the brain was another matter entirely. Its survival was a one in a billion anomaly. Many people are crazy about these kinds of mysteries, and this one was sending shockwaves through the scientific community. As they studied her brain, they noticed subtle but strange deviations. Its symmetry was slightly off, and the frontal lobes were a bit larger than expected for the skull's size. No one knew what it meant. Was it a unique genetic trait? An adaptation to an environment we can't comprehend? Or something else? 
The thing nobody tells you is that this was just the beginning of the mystery. The true terror wasn't in the shape of her brain, but in the invisible code that was hidden deep inside its ancient cells. The team decided to attempt the unthinkable. They were going to sequence its DNA. The results would be more unsettling than any ghost story. The ghost in the genome. Years after the initial discovery in a specialized molecular anthropology lab, scientists managed to extract ancient DNA from both the woman's preserved brain tissue and her bone marrow. This process is incredibly delicate, like trying to read a shredded book that's 8,000 years old. They were looking for her mitochondrial DNA, a type of genetic material passed down from mother to child that helps trace ancestry back through the ages. The most shocking fact was what they found or rather, what they didn't find. To understand why this was so terrifying, you need to know a little about haplogroups. Think of them as major branches on the human family tree. For ancient Native American populations, there are five main branches that almost everyone belongs to, A, B, C, D, and X. Scientists expected the Wendover woman to fit neatly into one of these known groups. She didn't. Her DNA revealed a highly unusual variant, a rare sublineage of haplogroup X that was so different it didn't match the dominant type seen in the Americas from that time. It was a genetic signature they had never seen before. But the truly chilling discovery came next. As they tested other remains from the Wendover site, they found two other individuals who carried the exact same rare genetic marker. These people were not closely related to the woman or to each other, and they had been buried in completely different parts of the pond, likely at different times. This wasn't a random family mutation. This was a pattern. It suggested the existence of an entire genetic lineage, a whole branch of the human family tree that was present in North America 8,000 years ago, but has since been completely wiped out. They left a genetic footprint and then disappeared from the face of the earth. This is what left the research team deeply unsettled. One scientist called the results biologically anomalous. Another, speaking off the record, said, it's like finding evidence of a lost color, something that once existed in the spectrum, but has now vanished. The discovery forces us to face a chilling thought. What if our understanding of human history is dangerously incomplete? What if entire civilizations rose, thrived and disappeared, leaving no genetic footprint in the people who walk the Earth today? The unsettling part isn't science fiction. There are no aliens, no monsters, just the horrifying truth that we might not really know where we come from. The Wendover people who once lived ordinary human lives now seem to belong to a forgotten branch of humanity. Their DNA, so faint and strange, doesn't fit into the known story of human evolution. It's as if they existed for a time, then vanished completely, their genetic signal erased by history itself. Their world was complex. They cared for their dead, built communities, and passed down traditions that are now dust. And yet their bloodline left almost nothing behind. That silence, that gap in the record, is what truly terrifies researchers. It means the past may be far larger, darker, and stranger than we ever imagined. The Wendover discovery isn't just an archaeological mystery, it's a mirror. It forces us to see how fragile memory really is, how entire peoples can disappear not just from the earth but from the story of humanity itself. They are a lost chapter in our own book and their fading DNA whispers a single haunting question, how many others have been erased forever? What do you think happened to this lost group of people? Could their DNA still be out there, hidden in plain sight? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.